Hear us today as we find ourselves in the Gospel of Mark, the 21st verse through the 28th verse. Hear these words. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of, of the law. Just then a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, Jesus said sternly. Come out of here. The evil spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed. They asked each other, what is this? A new teaching? And with such authority. He even gives orders to evil spirits, and they obey him. News about Jesus spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Ever equipping God, as I speak, may you increase and I decrease. May the words you have given me for this message be seeds that rest in our hearts, that we might bear fruit for you here on earth. May I be bold and courageous in speaking what you've given me to speak. And may we, as your people, have ears that hear. This is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Colosseum was packed. Thousands of people had gathered. People were sitting on the floor. They were in the stands. It was pre-COVID. It was a movie back in the 1990s. It stars the king of country. His name is George Strait. And he's personifying a person named Dusty Tim. And he's made it. It's about a young, rising country star who wears his cowboy hat and has a long ponytail, and he's trying to make it on the country scene, and Dusty has made it. He wears a white leather jacket and a silver Stetson, and on the back of his jacket it has his name written in red. It says Dusty. The fog lights are going off. The spotlights are going off. The electric show is going off behind him. His name is flashing in bright lights, and all of a sudden the spotlight hits center stage, and there's Dusty silhouetted in the center of the stage and the crowd goes crazy. They're screaming. Girls on the front row are grabbing. They're pushing each other. They're shouting. They're raising their hands and all he's done is this. And then he walks over here and he does this. And the crowd goes crazy. The girls are screaming. The guys are shouting. And he does this. And then he walks over and he picks up his guitar, puts a strap around his neck, and he strums the guitar and he sings, When you hear twin fiddles and a steel guitar, and the crowd went crazy. Do you know that show? It's one of my favorite shows because the king of country music stars in the show. But it's one of my favorite shows because of that very moment right there. That very moment right there when Dusty steps on the stage and he starts to sing. And he sings a song that's number one in country hits for the movie. And the crowd's going crazy. And he skips two bars on the song. And the crowd goes crazy. He says the wrong words in the song. And the crowd goes crazy. The girls scream and the guys shout. And he's standing there in the fog. Today we find Jesus teaching in the synagogue and he's teaching a story. He's teaching new teachings that are new to the people. It's not like the old scribes who are teaching straight from the Torah. It's about a freedom. It's about being released from the oppression. It's about being delivered. It's about being encountered by the Holy One, the God of all God. It's about freedom. Goes crazy. 
They stand in amazement and they punch each other, they elbow each other, and they say, what is this? He teaches with such authority. Now, they're used to being in the synagogues. They're used to encountering the scribes. They're used to the teachers of the law. Did you hear me? They're used to the teachers of the law, the teachers who say, Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. And Jesus comes saying, You are a loved individual. Jesus comes saying, You are free in the eyes of God. Jesus comes saying, Repent. The kingdom of hand, the kingdom of God is at hand. Come, be a child of God that you were created to be. Jesus comes and he speaks, and the crowd goes crazy. But yet someone doesn't. Someone doesn't go crazy at all. Someone's scared to death because the God of authority, the God of compassion, the God of reality, the God of the Holy Spirit has spoken straight to that person and it's hit that person in their heart and they're in denial of the goodness of God. Dusty stood on the stage and he missed two bars and he sang the wrong words and the crowd kept going crazy. Were they paying attention? Or were they just there for the show? Were they listening to what he was saying? It's, it's one of my, my favorite songs. Singing songs about the heartland, the land I come to know. It's about being country and living in the country and who you are as a country person. And he messed the words up. It was his star song. He messed the words up. He missed two bars in the rhythm. He completely messed it up. And the crowd said, that's fine. We're just here for the show. Are we? Do we hear the word of God when it comes to us wherever in our lives and from whoever in our lives? Do we hear the word of God that says to us that we are free? That says to us that God loves us in spite of who we are? In spite of what we've done, that we can come to God with anything and everything that we have and we can give ourselves to God and God will receive us if we will repent and know that the kingdom of God is at hand? Or are we just here for the show? Are we just here so we can check it off our bucket list on Sunday morning and say, I've been to church? It looks good in society. It looks good on my resume. I served in this position. I served in that position. Or are we in earnestly seeking an intimate relationship with Jesus? It hit too close to home for him. And he shouted. You ever shout at God? You ever told God he's getting too close? You ever told God you don't want God to see that part of you? I know I'm not alone. Get out of here. I know who you are. You are Jesus of Nazareth. And he called him by name. He didn't want Jesus to have any part of his life. He was possessed by a demon, an evil spirit. I like that interpretation much better. Many interpretations say he was demon-possessed. Well, I grew up in Dumas, Texas, and we are the Dumas demons. So I take offense to that. But to say he was possessed by an evil spirit should land right in your lap. Because we've all been visited by evil. Some of us perpetuate evil. There are sins in this country right now that are going on that I can't believe. I was recently cataloging sermons. And I came across an old writing which I published in your letter this week. And it talked about the sin of racism. And we're worse now than we were in 2003 when I wrote it. Because for some reason, we keep teaching what our ancestors taught us. And we don't want God to be any part of that. Because it hits too close to home for us. Or maybe you're caught up in the sin of sexism. Or maybe you're caught up in oppressing others. 
Or maybe you're only looking out for yourself and you don't care about your brother or sister down the road. You want me to go on? You're caught up in greed. You're caught up in lust. You're caught up in envy. You're caught up in jealousy. Can we just go ahead and name them? They're evil spirits that live in us. There are evil spirits that hu every human being experiences. And what do we do? Yay, Jesus! You are Jesus of Nazareth. Get out of my way. I'm not letting you in here. Because I like it. I feel good when I'm more powerful than somebody else. I feel good when I make myself righteous because my skin's prettier than their skin. I feel good when I can lord my power. I feel good when I can squish somebody. I feel good when I can make a post on social media that makes me look better than I really am. Evil spirits. Evil spirits. What you need to know is that in ancient times, it began with, Eve, with Adam in all of creation. Naming something gave you power over that something. So when the evil spirit, the man with the evil spirit, yelled out at Jesus and tried to name Jesus, what did Jesus do to him? Be quiet. Be quiet. We will not go there. You do not have the authority to name who God is in your life. You hear me? You don't have the authority to name who God is in your life. Living in your evil spirit, they cannot be your God. God is God. God's the one who created you. And you don't have the authority to name that God. You can claim all the other gods in your life that you want to. But you can't name God. Because God knit you together. In your mother's womb, God knit you together. And God breathed the holy ruah, the breath of God into you. And you know what God said about you? You're good. You're beautiful. You're wonderful. I have created such beauty in you. And here, his name is Jesus. I send him to you with authority to overcome what you have been taught, to overcome the oppression, to set freedom for the captives, to give sight to the blind, to let the lame walk, to let those who are entrapped in their own evil spirits be delivered. It's not some hocus pocus. It's God working. And he works in the people. And he, and he speaks directly to the one person. He's in a crowd. You get it? And the crowd's going crazy. Except for one. Except for one. Do you hear me? One person is hurting so bad that Jesus stops what he's doing and addresses the one. You know what that says about you? You can be that one. And God will stop. God will stop and be with you. But we have to reach out. And let God in. And let God know that we don't want this evil spirit. That we're hurting. We have to do our part as believers of God, believers of Jesus. If we've accepted the gift that God's given us in Jesus Christ, we've received that grace, that relationship where the forgiveness has happened, and we've been born anew in the Holy Spirit, then we should allow God to be God in our lives and deliver us. Dusty left the stage feeling betrayed. The crowd was chanting his name, Dusty, Dusty, Dusty. Wouldn't it be cool? Dusty, Dusty. You're thousands of people and they're chanting your name, Dusty, Dusty. Brady, Brady. Right? I don't know who you're rooting for in a few weeks. But we 
cheer their names. They're our heroes. But he felt betrayed because they didn't know his heart. An artist sings from their heart. It's their gift to the world. And they don't pay enough attention to it. They're just there for the show. They're not there for the message. They're not there to be intimate with the entertainer. To hear what the entertainer is saying to them. To touch their heart and connect. No, they're here for the show. I love where he goes in his betrayal. He feels betrayed by the crowd. And he goes out into the country. And he pulls up to a little house. And he sits in a rocking chair on the front porch of that house. It's his grandma. His grandma. An elder in his life who is full of wisdom. And she reminds him. It's not about the show. It's about what your message is to the world. It's about the talent you have. It's not about the number one song on the chart. It's not about the tens of thousands of people in the Colosseum. It's about your message through song. Isn't that why you started? So that you could share your music with all people? He had to really do some soul searching. I suspect we do too. I suspect there are plenty of us sitting in this room who have our own evil spirits. And sometimes we come to places like this for the show. Not only for the show, but to be seen. So that other people will know we were there. And God's speaking to us with authority. And God's saying to us, I love you. I love you. And I want to deliver you from where you are and take you to a new understanding of who you can be. But the responsibility lies on us. I love the gospel writer, Mark. But there's a part of me that doesn't like it. I want to know what happened to the man who was freed from the evil spirit? He wasn't there for the show. Jesus stopped everything he was doing to heal that man from his evil spirit. And he walked away from that synagogue completely different. Fred Craddock says, to know Jesus is to know and to live into the God event through the coming of the Christ. Not to be able to quote Jesus on certain topics. To know Jesus is to live with God through the Christ event. Not to be able to, not, not to, be able to just quote Jesus on certain topics. What he means is, when we bring ourselves before God, and we come into holy places like this, or it could be our prayer closet or home, it could be our desk at work, wherever we encounter God, do we give ourselves fully to God so that we can be transformed by God? When he told the man to be quiet, he was speaking to the Spirit. That was in the man. And was telling the spirit he no longer had control over the man. I wish Mark had elaborated. Because there's a last part of that scripture. The news of Jesus. Spread quickly. Across Galilee. Who do you think was talking about Jesus? The one who had been delivered. He ran from that place. I'll promise you. He ran. If he had social media, he was busting it up. 
He was Snapchatting all the... Do y'all know, you know what Jesus did? Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, whatever you want to put it on. It was there. And the word about Jesus spread across all the land. And you know what happened? People came for the show. Two thousand and twenty-one years later, we gather because we've heard the amazing work of Jesus. I wonder: Are we here to let our spirits go, or are we just here for the show? <laughs> 